Hi YouTube and welcome back to my random thoughts on Thursdays. This week I am doing a little bit of a rant on uh, today's perception of wealth among uh, the youth of today. Okay, so before I get started, I just thought I'd say uh, why I haven't actually put up a vlog for a couple of weeks, but I've been having a lot of problems with my video editing and gaming computer and things where the uh, the graphics card uh, was having problems and the hard drive was having problems and ultimately it turned out that the hard drive had bad sectors and stuff so I actually had to put a new graphics card in and just all sorts of things so for a couple of weeks there I just wasn't able to do film anything well I could film on the camera but I couldn't um, edit or anything. So apologize for not having a vlog up for a couple weeks, but uh, be that as it may, um, here I am, I'm back, and uh, hopefully I can uh, start getting back into doing this weekly again. So getting into my rant, um, in terms of perception of wealth or success or whatever you want to call it, the thing that really has been um, bugging me lately, I do a lot of um, chats and I spend a lot of time online in chat rooms and forums and that kind of thing, and I keep seeing this same comment over and over and over again. Um, I'm not in it for the money. Um, I don't need money. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not interested in money. I I don't have any. Um, need for money. I don't have, and, and most of these people that I'm seeing say this, um, most of them are young. I would say anywhere between 15 and 25. Most of them um, either um, have, I, you know, if they're if they're under 18, they're still in high school, um, or you know, if they're in their early 20s, are either unemployed, underemployed, or um, are in college, or maybe not in college at all. Just uh, most of them, from those that I've talked to, are still living at home with their parents. Now, there's nothing wrong with living home with your parents. Absolutely not. I actually stayed at home living with my grandmother until I was about 24 or 25, until after I graduated college myself and got my first job, and that's that's when I went out and got my first uh, apartment. So, absolutely nothing nothing wrong with that, but the attitude that I'm seeing from these folks is that they don't plan on ever moving out from their parents' house. They're like, my parents work, they make money, they give me food and clothing and a place to sleep, so why do I need money? I don't need money, I don't need to get a job, I don't need to do anything. And that's rather disturbing to me. Um, and on top of that, they seem to perceive those of us who do work hard and earn more than they think we need. And the fact that, you know, someone like me, uh, I don't give every extra penny that I earn to charity, um, all of a sudden makes someone like me a bad person. And I think that's a very judgmental attitude. And I really don't appreciate um, that kind of attitude because I was raised to work hard, uh, try and become successful, and try and become better than I am. Uh, to try and raise myself from where I was. Um, I grew up in poverty. Um, perhaps not the uh, the worst poverty, but it was definitely poverty. My family was not middle class in any way, shape, or form. It was a family of four of us, my mom, myself, my grandparents, and we were barely scraping by on $500 a month from my grandfather's social security income. That's the only money we had. My mom worked once in a while, and when, when she did, we actually, you know, ate, had better food and were able to buy um, some nice things here and there, but uh, she was unemployed most of the time, primarily through due to her alcoholism. Uh, she just couldn't hold a job, and so my grandfather, his, I mean, he was too old to work, so we had to go and rely on his Social Security money that he was earning from all of the years of work he put in himself. Um, prior to that. And so, you know, he worked hard, he tried to do um, as good of a job as he could to provide for his family. Uh, my mom, unfortunately, fell into alcoholism and wasn't able to do the same, but I saw that and I, I was like, I don't want to live like this. 
I don't want to be like this. I don't want to have to scrape by every single week and, and wonder if I can eat. And so I worked hard. Um, I got myself through college. Um, I was thankfully eligible for state and federal grants, which helped me get through college, but I still had fees, I still had a transportation, I still had to eat when I was on campus and things. So I worked three jobs to get myself through, through college. Um, I was living with my grandmother who had inherited my grandfather's social security income. And so the two of us at that point were living together. And I had to help with rent because rent was getting more expensive. I had to help with food, um, et cetera. So, you know, I had to work really, really hard. But I knew that I didn't want to continue to live like that. And so I wanted to get that college degree. I wanted to get that better job. I got a job out of college. And I know right now with the current economy that it's very difficult to get a job you're qualified for out of college. I understand that. I know that it's difficult. But I see a lot of young people aren't even trying anymore. They, they see this stuff on the news of you can't get a job. And so they're not even trying. They're like, there's no jobs out there. Um, and a lot of them are, are just kind of looking in their local newspaper in their local area um, and aren't even considering the, con the, the possibility of maybe relocation or maybe taking a job that maybe um, is less than what they're qualified for, just something to get them by until they get a job that they really want based on their degree or, or what their interests are in. Instead, they're just content to just sit around moping around at home and crying and complaining on the internet. And I don't understand this. It's like it's like a lot of them have just given up on life. Um, I know there's still young people out there who are hardworking and ambitious and are go-getters and want to do something with their lives and are finding jobs and are um, you know, making a success of themselves. So I'm not saying that this is true for all young people, but there is a certain subset of folks between 15 and 25 that seem to have just completely given up. Um, and I think that they're listening to the news media too much. There's too much of this, there's no jobs, there's no jobs, there's no jobs. And I think that is not entirely true because I know a number of industries where there's not enough qualified people. Engineering is one of them. My husband works at a uh, high-tech company and they cannot find qualified college graduates to fill positions. They are having to bring in people from other countries because there's no one graduating with these degrees. You know, um, so if you're not in college yet and you're considering, you know, possibly going to college, Engineering is a great field to go into because we need engineers, especially in the United States. Uh, we don't have enough qualified engineers. Electrical engineering is a big one, computer science, etc. Anything in those fields. Um, the knowledge industry right now for internet, uh, web design, web development especially, uh, web analytics, the field I'm in, um, there's still great demand in those areas. And I'm sure there's other, other ones as well, but I'm not as, as familiar with the other career paths out there. But, you know, definitely start looking at, if you're not in college yet, look at industries where there's a deficit, where there are job openings, where there's not enough qualified people. You know, don't go into fields that are oversaturated, excuse me, oversaturated, um, or there just isn't a great demand, social work being one of them. Not to say that social work isn't a uh, meaningful pursuit to, to follow, but I don't think there's the demand out there. And so people who go into social work for a degree aren't finding jobs because there's just not enough jobs in that field right now. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, if you really have any ambition whatsoever, um, don't give up. Uh, just find a field that you think you could be interested in that has a lot of demand out there because there are careers like that out there. And don't look down on those of us who have worked hard and have worked our way up economically in society. Um, I do give to charity. I don't snub my nose at people who are poor. I have given a lot to homeless shelters and um, everything from food and clothing and whatnot. Um, I've donated to Goodwill. I've donated to cancer research. I've donated to do a lot of causes that are uh, that I'm passionate about. 
Uh, just because I don't give every single extra penny that I don't need, uh, that I, instead I put it in the savings accounts for, for future use, just because I don't want to ever be in a position of what happens if my industry goes away? What happens if uh, my business fails? You know, I need to make sure I have something to fall back on. Um, and I don't see that as making me a bad person that I want to make sure I have a nest egg that can support me, especially a retirement one. Um, I do plan on working as long as I can because I happen to enjoy work, but that doesn't mean, um, you know, I might not be able to. Maybe I'll, I'll become disabled and, you know, while there is disability out there, it sometimes isn't enough. And so having a reserve to fall back on, I think, is not a bad thing. Um, and, and please, you know, think twice before you judge someone for being successful. Um, it's actually quite hurtful for those of us, especially those of us who've worked hard to get where we are. Um, not all of us have inherited our money. And for those of uh, folks out there who have personally judged me and said that I'm a liar for saying that I come from poverty, do I know true poverty? I mean, have I ever lived in, in Africa in a, in a mud hut or something? No, of course not. Or, or in a, a slum in India. No, I have not lived in that level of extreme poverty. I, I'll admit that's true. But that doesn't mean that I don't know what it's like to go a day or two without food. My family didn't always have money for food. Yes, I always had a roof over my head. This is true. Um, and we always paid our bills, made sure that we had rent, made sure that we had our utilities. Uh, especially in the winter time in Chicago because you don't want to have your heat go out when it's minus 20 degrees outside. Um, food was sort of like tertiary to everything else. Like, okay, maybe we're just having water for dinner tonight. Um, and so I think that is still a level of poverty. It might not be extreme poverty, but it's still poverty. Um, you know, to, to go to school and wearing rags, wearing secondhand clothing and to be teased and bullied because I'm not wearing the latest designer clothing um, that happened even in my generation. So anyway, that's kind of, uh, that's my rant and I'm sorry if it's a bit of a long rant, but it's just a topic that's really been on my mind a lot lately and has really been bothering me. Um, anyway, if you have thoughts about this one way or the other, I'd appreciate comments below. I accept all comments. I won't delete comments. Doesn't matter if you're positive or negative or whatnot. You know, feel free to leave a comment one way or the other and uh, uh, keep the discussion going. I'd appreciate to hear your thoughts. Uh, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.